Hello and welcome to another chat. Ukraine's uncrewed service vessels, USVs, are pretty well known and I guess everyone knows how they've changed combat at sea. Of course, the world started to learn about them in autumn of 2022 when they started turning up in Sevastopol in Crimea. Naturally, the story goes back before then. I want to share more information than I now have on the original USV developed by Ukraine and how that evolved into a family called the Megura family of USVs. So this video is going to cover information that's not been previously out there. I am H.I. Sutton. I'm an independent defense analyst. I focus on unconventional naval warfare, combat capabilities and strategy using open source intelligence. This is unscripted, unedited, obvious already. Find me on social media. Usual caveat supply. Let's get on with it. So Ukraine's uncrewed service vessels have been incredibly successful. They have denied Russia sea control. And this is so remarkable because Russia had all the advantages going into the war. No one would have expected this, I think, least of all the Russians. Done plenty of articles on that. Today, I want to look at the Megura family. So the first one was developed in May 2022. Some engineers, four engineers were given orders, do something with the enemy fleet. And this is what they came up with. Their idea, pretty revolutionary, really, take an uncrewed service vessel or make an uncrewed service vessel rather, fill it with explosives and drive it into a Russian warship. It's sort of like a surface torpedo. Now, they, of course, weren't the first people literally to come up with this idea. Iran certainly had been doing it, but their take on it was original. And with modern satellite communications, notably Starlink, they were able to do things that hadn't previously been achieved, certainly by uh, Iran. And they definitely weren't copying Western militaries. Although having said that, Western experts, no doubt, I'm confident, were coming up with very similar ideas and possibly contributed to the development in some ways. But essentially, this is Ukrainian development. I think that's important to recognize that. They had a six meter fishing boat. It was an incredibly low profile design. That must have been pretty successful because very quickly within a couple of months, they were testing the V2, the Megura V2. This is a rare photo of it, although the photo itself has been around a long time. It hadn't previously been publicly identified as a V2, or a Megura, in fact. Side by side, this image shows them. The one on the left is the original V1. The one on the right is the V2. The V2 is a bit smaller, overall certainly shorter. It has an inboard motor from a jet ski. I'll cover that a little bit more in a, in a bit, instead of the outboard motor. And that gives it a lower profile overall. Having said that, it is a bit fatter. These started turning up in Sevastopol in September 2021. Certainly, I paid a lot of attention, did articles on them, but I don't think the world at large paid that that much notice to them. The Russians certainly didn't. They towed it out to sea and blew it up pretty quickly. They didn't study it that carefully. Bit of a hint here, it says 4.5 V2, and then something else I'm not sure if anyone can read that. I don't read Ukrainian. I think 4.5 is probably the length of the, the hull, it certainly matches. And then V2, um, bit confusing because I think this is a V3, but the lines between V2 and V3 are definitely blurred for me. They look very similar. So it says V2 is probably a V2. Here's another image of the same boat. From this image, I was able to identify that the drivetrain came from a Sea Dew GTX personal watercraft or jet ski in common parlance. Here's the receipts. Bit of ice in there. So the V3 came along and it looks almost identical to the V2. I think the main significance really is not so much the overall characteristics of the craft. It's that it's much more producible and it's ready for serial production and mass use. And it was used to great effect in October 2022. On 29th of October, the world saw the first images from uncrewed surface vessels racing around. Here is an infrared image. It's a still from a video of one racing towards the Russian flagship 
or a frigate. No Russian ships were actually sunk during the attack. They came very, very close. Um, some of the USVs like this one also penetrated the harbour, deep inside the harbour. And this was very much a wake-up call to the Russian military and Russian navy, but also to the world. It showed how potent and capable these USVs could be. And of course, subsequently, they sunk many vessels. Maguras, I think the number I've been told is 17 um, vessels have been sunk, at least, by Maguras. Some of them significant warships. Here's my cutaway from a while back of the V3. Really interesting design. The Starlink antenna at the back there above that square, above the, um, the stern, that was the key enabler, I'd say. Then there was the V4. Don't know much about this. It's just an experimental type. Again, this is not public information until I revealed it yesterday on my website. The V5 was the main next iteration. This was the second generation. Really. If the V3 represents the, com the final or the maturing of the first generation, this is the second generation. It replaced it one for one. Similar sized vessel, um, better range, much larger warhead. Um, and these are the ones that have been responsible for sinking so many ships. Here's another image of it. Still probably has Starlink, but it's got different antennas on it. As well as Starlink, they use Kamita and other communication antennas. But the satellite communications are, are high resolution, high data, two-way communications are absolutely instrumental in making Ukrainian USVs what they are. Here's the evolution. So from the V1, looks like a sort of flattened boat with an outboard motor. The V2 and V3 looking very similar to each other. V3 a bit longer. And then the V5. The V5 comes in two main iterations. That's what you're seeing here. The first one, the older model, has a more boxy um, sort of superstructure, probably with the engine underneath it. And then the, the later model, lower down, is more streamlined. They're both V5s and they're interchangeable, really, but just a maturing of the design. Next, we'll get to the V6, or rather the W6. You'd be forgiven for thinking that the V that I've been talking about, V1, V2, V3, probably stands for um, probably stands for version. It doesn't. It stands for V hull. This is the W6. It's got a W hull or popularly known as a whaler hull, as in the Boston whaler. So if you've heard of the Boston whaler, whaler uh, boat, this is the same hull design. It's not literally a, a Boston whaler. Of course, it's a Ukrainian designed hull. Um, it's a bit bigger, carries a larger payload. Here's my illustration of it with air-to-air -air missiles launched to a Frankensam. They call it Sea Dragon, but it's actually two AA-11 Archer air-to-air -air missiles, Soviet-era air-to-air -air missiles carried by Flank and Fulgrim fighters in both Russian and Ukrainian service. The Ukrainians bolted a couple to the back of one of the W-6s and shot down a helicopter. In this illustration, which is from a year ago, I showed a, a pump jet or water jet propulsion similar to jet ski but i think that's actually an error it probably had an outboard motor um but the apologies the illustration was based on the info at the time the last and final um publicly known magura version at this time is the v7 so back to a v hull is a fair bit longer seven meters as it happens and it's seen here carrying two Sidewinder Frankensams. This one has been credited with shooting down a SU-30 flanker fighter. The first time that's happened in history. Um, a USV is shot down a fast jet. Really impressive design. And this seems to be a mature design that possibly is superseding or certainly complementing the, the V5s. Of course, Magura aren't the only people making USVs. You could say that from the Magura V1, all the subsequent Ukrainian VS, USVs 
off, you know, owe something to the Megura family. Megura's there with the red box around. You also have, of course, the famous Sea Baby, Catran, and numerous other designs. There's more designs than this, but I've only stuck to the publicly available ones. Okay, thank you very much. If you get to this end screen, please do like, subscribe, and comment. Please share. And uh, until next time.